Hello, I'm Paivi and in this video we will create an abstract mess. I will be creating this in my art channel, but you can create on a canvas or uh, and on any surface. I'll be using acrylic paints, but of course you can use watercolors or even colored pencils if you like. I'm creating this painting in an old smash book that I found some time ago while cleaning the studio. I like to make small studies like this in a book so that they are easy to store. These books are also pleasurable to pick up and browse. I call them art journals rather than sketchbooks because I occasionally add writing on the pages. This time there won't be any words, but just a painting. We'll start the painting with big broad brush strokes so that they cover the surface. We are now painting in a very contemporary style, which many artists have nowadays. It's based on loose strokes, and I guess it's the style that many who are not so much into art say that even a child can do it. But it's not quite like that. This style requires two things. First, the energy. These paintings may look messy, but their impression is dynamic. We want to use colors and make brush strokes so that the image becomes lively and energetic. Second, the depth. In these kinds of expressive abstract paintings, the changes of brightness and darkness are dramatic. So instead of just pouring out pretty pinks, turquoises, etc., we need to widen the palette to pale pastels and dark muted tones. These abstracts are often some kind of landscapes, so let's paint most of the background with dark colors, like it would be earth, and then add some pastels and brighter colors on the top of the darkness. Now we are painting broad and bold strokes with a flat brush. I recommend standing while painting the background because then it's easier to relax and let go. So far we have tried to activate the right brain and not overthink our strokes, but I feel that leaving out the left brain is not a good thing. We also need to include our analytical part in the process to notice the nuances in what we paint. It's the nuances that make the mess either ugly or beautiful. So now I welcome my inner engineer, a pedantic pain in the ass, who likes everything to be neat and tidy and focuses on things that I would not like to think now, like washing off the paint from the fingers. But yes, she's right. If your hands get into the paint, it's often good to wash them right away so that you don't get the paint in the wrong places. My inner engineer is also really good at pointing out the spots that need filling. The background is not properly painted, she claims, and makes me find the areas that still have some white left, especially the edges of the piece. This has a significant effect on the overall quality. Now I have changed to a smaller brush and go through the painting systematically, filling blank spots and adding contrasts to areas that look too planned. This kind of cleaning calms us down and it's just what is needed for the next step. Next, 
let's start painting those energetic and dynamic strokes which make the style. Instead of just quickly spreading short strokes here and there or slowly painting a long stroke, create groups of strokes, including shapes as well. Focus on a small area at a time and making the strokes as lively as possible by adding shapes on the top of them and behind them. Don't just paint a line and leave it alone, but get back and paint some parts of it with a different color so that it's like light hits on it and changes its appearance. shapes that are behind a line make sure that they continue to the other side of the line so that the result looks layered again embrace lights and darks when mixing a color call your inner engineer and ask if the color is medium light or dark don't just paint with medium tones but let the dark meet the light so that there are shadows and highlights. The more you begin to see your painting as a three-dimensional scenery where light travels, the better you get this style. I have noticed that one of the biggest hindrances for becoming a better painter is to save every pretty detail. I try not to fall in love with the elements that are located near the edges. And it's totally okay to paint over an area with big bold strokes and start again. Pablo Picasso has said, there's no abstract art. You must always start with something. Afterward, you can remove all traces of reality. So first, we were painting heaven and earth, and now we are painting a meadow. Don't let the goal abstract bother you too much. Imagine a field that is full of weed, growing uncontrollably in many directions. The shadows that they cast are dark, yet the traveling light hits on their leaves and stems here and there.
far, my color scheme has been quite limited. I now want to bring in a new color, a bright red. It's a risk and may destroy the elegance of the muted palette. But every painting needs an ugly face, the rock bottom where we take big risks, lose a lot and then figure out how to rise with a new vision and strength. So I paint some shapes with red tones and walk down a sad path. I begin to think about poppies and my inner engineer tries to explain how they are constructed. And it takes some time before I wake up and remember that this is an abstract painting. I should not get stuck with things like that. So I start over, bold strokes, and my spirit is rising. I can feel the wind and the air is fresh. When painting an abstract, it's better to think about things that are not so concrete. It's better to think about weeds in general than a particular plant. It's better to think about plants than flowers or a particular flower. Light and warmth rather than the sun. It's good to think about transformation and change rather than a static state of a physical space. So this painting is not so much about the meadow, but about how the wind changes it, how it prevents us from seeing clearly, how the flowers get blurry and how differently the plants take it. Some of them stay low and feel protected. Some of them stand tall and endure the blow and some of them are too weak to resist and they let go. We are following the wind, they shout, and their voice gradually disappears as the lines change to smaller and smaller dots. With the wind, you have a direction in the painting, a visual flow that leads the eye. Then the mess is not just a mesh of strokes, but a captivating stream that makes the viewer come back to it again and again, pondering what's happening here. And uh, I kind of like it, even if I quite don't know why.
Now the painting may look like it's finished, but when working with many colors, the result is often not unified enough. Choose a color for the light and mix either gel medium or glazing medium and water with the paint. Now you have an emulsion that you can add as a top layer. Spread it to most parts of the painting, leaving only the focal point and a couple of smaller areas without. After painting the unifying layer, I add some finishing touches and there it is, a beautiful mess. It took about 1 hour and 40 minutes to paint this. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my weekly emails. I blog every week, uh, share my newest pieces and tips every single week. So it's really worth subscribing. You will also get a free mini course when you subscribe. And I also have a wide selection of online classes from drawing and illustration to painting and collage. You know, my education is in design and in design we are taught to imitate all kinds of style. Of course, I also have my, a style of my own but I also like to play with different styles, like in this video. So I hope you join me and I hope we'll walk in this art making journey together.